Welcome to Home Education Matters, the weekly podcast supporting you on your home education journey. Hello and welcome to another episode of Home Education Matters and today I am joined again by the wonderful Sarita Patney and we are talking about uh, community and collaboration as part of our Parenting with Possibilities season and this is a topic that is, it's a, it's a funny thing because Sarita and I turned up to the podcast this morning and we weren't sure what we were going to be talking about and I asked Sarita and she said that uh, she thinks it would be nice to talk about community and the importance of community and it really resonated with me because I was doing a trauma workshop yesterday and as part of the trauma workshop it was talking about how um, across the world in in uh, in different communities they have a different approaches to people that have experienced trauma and one of the most successful approaches to helping somebody who has experienced trauma is when the tribe all get together and they and it becomes a a a kind of community trauma they take the trauma on as part of the community and it becomes a shared trauma and apparently that has been proven to be the most the quickest and most effective way to deal with trauma is to feel that you are part of a group that that share that are sharing it with you. So actually, as you as you mentioned that today, Sarita, it's yeah, it's spooky, isn't it? Because I was thinking only only this morning how vital it is to have that sense of community and collaboration, particularly as a parent and particularly as a home ed parent. So Sarita, first of all, hello and thank you so much for coming on again. And isn't it spooky how things work like that? Synchronicities. Hi, hi, Eleanor. It's it's echo. I don't know if you know echo. The term is the earth coincidence control office and it's it's that and (laughs) yeah I I have goosebumps when you're talking because that's exactly what I something that I wanted to bring in one of the discoveries that I have made over the last gosh month and and maybe longer actually but the last month is where it's really been so obvious to me because I am as you know, I was in Cabo Verde with with another friend who is also a mother, parent, with her child, and we we were living together for a whole month. And and I and I've never met her before in person. We we knew each other online because we'd done some trainings and some workshops together, but we'd never really met each other in person. Never spent time together. And it was really this moment of inspiration. Marina messaged me and said, I'm dreaming of a bridge house with parents, for parents with children. And and I was also very similar to what's just happened now, also thinking of the same thing when she messaged me. And I my response was just, yes, 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 like I'm in. And And then everything happened quite smoothly. But being together for a whole month, living with someone, it was really, it was scary. It was like, it was so scary to just be completely visible, completely. I mean, you can't hide it. If you're irritated with your children or, or you're irritated with something like, oh, the, someone didn't wash the dishes up and, and you're, you know, it, it's just little things that you just can't hide when you're with in the same space for a month. Doing pretty much everything together. I, I think I remember maybe two hard, like two two hour slots that we did something different. Otherwise we were together all the time. And and it was intense. But what it really showed me was just how how incredible it can be to have a team and and really have someone that is is with you and 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 wants the best for you. And I mean, we all have survival strategies and we all have our stuff that comes up and 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 there can be moments of tension and uncomfortableness, but it's really about how we how do we work through that rather than pretending it's not there, brushing it under the carpet, it was really about having the conversations, like saying the things that you would never really dare to say. And that was part of the experiment was really how do we how do we create a new culture for children? And and really, we can only create a new culture for children if we go first. 
we we have to show them what a new culture can be like and and so that was really the discovery the big discovery was if i want something for my different for, different for my children then i have to create something different for myself i have to go first and and that's really what marina and i did is is we did something different because and and here this is me being honest and and this is now scary to share but you know one a, a big survival strategy and and from the other women that i've shared it with i i think it's true for other women too but it it's like this secret competition that i need to be better and comparing ourselves to each other and this feeling of i'm not doing it as well as somebody else or you know and it, it's and, and and as i've looked back and and that some of the that was one of the big things that came up for me was i could see myself slipping into this competing and comparing and and what i realized is that is is teamwork community connection collaboration it doesn't happen when that is going on and so it was it was actually creating enough of a space to recognize that i was going into that or or for marina to notice it and to be brave enough to either say hey this is going on or to be brave enough and say to the other person i sense that this is happening is it is that really the case and and then also being adult enough to hear that so if someone says to you hey what what is that like is that is that your survival strategy of of comparing yourself or being competitive and 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 it can be reactive and and it can be and it's so scary to be so honest and say what you see but my hunch is is that all of us see so much but we have these strategies of just pretending not to see them because it's too like what do you do with it what do you do with it once you see something and how do you bring it safely to somebody and and for me that's this discovery of of how do we really collaborate with other women and and not be in this space of competition and comparing but really i i love you enough to tell you what i see i care enough to say what i see because i don't want that for you i don't want that for me and i don't want that for for our children and and that was really a big part of it um and that and that comes with trust as well doesn't it and, and trust having that trust in yourself to react in a way that that works for you and having trust in the other person that they have your best interests when they talk to you and trust i'm guessing just comes with time and um time spent with that person and shared values as well i'm guessing right yes and and also there's it it it, it comes with with your own decision because we can decide we can decide not to trust someone and then you can go through a whole experience like a whole month of being with that person and then looking for evidence for not for reasons not to trust them and or you can say okay i'm going to trust you and and then go with that and take the feedback and and say okay i i trust you so i'm going to hear this feedback and and it doesn't mean that you take everything and what they say is true or accurate but you allow yourself to receive it and then and then process it for yourself and really say okay does this create does this create a resistance in me like do i want to push back and for me usually when i want to push back on something there's probably some truth in it that there's something that they've hit that i is really uncomfortable and i don't want to hear and 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 sometimes if it doesn't land then for me usually it's 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 really water off a duck's back but but one one discovery that i did make is that if i take feedback and even if it's not true i still take it to be true and allow it to to let let myself like crumble almost then then that was there was this part of me that was not trusting myself and and so there there's also this big piece of do you choose to trust yourself 
and and so it's really this balance of trusting yourself and trusting this other person and then and 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 then and going from there i hear exactly what 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 you're saying because i think that that example that you used of when somebody says something gives you feedback and it just doesn't land and and you're like yeah no <laughs> I, that's just not that's just not not the reality it is water off a duck's back and and that's because your sense of self-trust is, is such that you know yourself and you know that that's not a reality so you're it's okay to let it go and as you say the times when it kind of niggles and it and it lands home uh, is really an, a signpost to us that it's actually telling us something that we really need to pay attention to so I completely understand what you mean there I think that idea of trust that I mentioned isn't just about trusting in the other person it's about self-trust because partly I was going to say to you I was going to ask you it's very difficult for some people to have a kind of default trust because you 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 suggest because I suggested that it takes a while for trust to build up and you rightly sort of pulled me up on that in a very polite way and said that if you go in kind of with trust to begin with then your confirmation bias will look for examples of trust rather than look for examples of not um, the person not being trustworthy. And part of me was thinking, as you're saying that, well, that's that's nice, but there are times when you have had your trust broken in the past and you may find it very difficult to go in straight away and trust in the people in your community. And I'm guessing that um, that your answer to that would be if you have enough self-trust that will kind of shore you up for the times if and when your trust does get broken. Am I putting words in your mouth there? But is that sort of where you would go with that? Yeah, and mm, I, I think for me, there is a, there's definitely a link, but I think it's also accurate to that, yeah, people do break your trust and it happens and it's painful. And and then when that happens, it's for me, I I, I would want to go in and, and really heal that space and 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 go through something called an emotional healing process, which is to really um an emotional healing process is where you 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 you're you're navigating your heart. And it's really going into that space and allowing the the emotions to to transform your being. So you 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 really let your feelings speak, and it's a process of transformation because when you have your trust broken, it it also works both ways. But you you allowed that to happen, and this might be difficult to hear, and and it's definitely difficult. For me to hear this as well, um, when it when it said, but if your trust is broken, there's a part of you that allowed someone to break your trust, and the minute you can see it like that, you realise that you can do something differently, that like you have a choice. But when we stay in this place of someone broke my trust, we stay in the place of being a victim, and then we we can never come out of that if we choose to stay there because. People will always be doing something to you and you will also always be reacting to that. And I, what, what I'm making more of a shift to towards in my life is, is really this, I want to be responsible for my life. Like I, I want to own it. I want to, I want to be able to, to choose the direction to, to choose. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you, you change the people around you or because we have no control over that. We have no control over the other people, but we do have control about how we're showing up in relationships, how we're showing up in situations, what we say, how we say it, and 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 what we allow ourselves to feel and not feel. And and I think as I as we've talked about in previous sessions with you, just reconnecting with our feelings, I think our feelings and, and not actually, I think it's it's like I I know and I've experienced that our feelings are always giving us information. So if if somebody is doesn't feel safe for you to be around, th there will be this low level of fear that's saying this doesn't feel right, this doesn't feel uncomfortable, like this feels uncomfortable, or 
or you might find that you make excuses not to see that person and you, you don't know what it is but it, and it could be that you you get sick you know you, your energetic body creates situations create situations where you you can't be there and and we, we can ignore those sometimes especially when we're not tuned into to what our heart is saying and so yes and I feel fear that I've detracted from from your question a little bit but it was really this yeah when your when your trust is broken taking responsibility for it and 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 really asking yourself the question how am I allowing that to happen how am I allowing somebody to break my trust like what what part did I play in that yeah and, absolutely absolutely and and I think that I think that they, the idea that being attuned to your emotional response to people is so important because you're right, there are many times when you may instinctively pull back, maybe you don't message very quickly in response or maybe when um when an event is organized you agree but then afterwards you start feeling quite nervous or anxious about it and these are all things that the sort of little indicators that we need to pay attention to that relationship and just be aware of how we're showing up and how the other person is showing up so for you uh, one really important part of community is the ability to give and receive feedback and to have that trust in yourself uh, how you show up in the community but also in the community and how it shows up for you so what what uh what other benefits are there for you for for having that sense of community around you oh this yeah this um the, the shared experience is so big um but I, I also want to mention something else first which is when you say the giving and the receiving feedback and and what I find is that when you have that sense of community and collaboration with somebody, when they when they give you that feedback, it 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 how do I I haven't got the words quite quite, but it's almost like it allows you to really um it it's like this process of really coming back to what your true self is, because so often we're we have blind spots and we can't see them. So I know that I do so many things with my children or react so many ways to, to their requests, to their demands, to their needs in a very unconscious way. Like I'm not even aware sometimes of, of my reaction. And having someone else to say, oh, did you notice that you, you you said it like this, and that's really confusing. And and actually, I can give you an example because I I can think of one right now. So, one of my big research questions is really knowing what I want, and and it's like I'm I'm discovering that. What is it that I want? Do I want to sit on this side of the sofa or on that side of the sofa? Do I want a glass of water, and do I want someone to give it to me? Like really, this coming down to the real detail of what is it that I want in each moment, and. When we were in Cabo Verde, I, I was on doing this research and we we were somewhere, I can't remember where, and I said to Marina, should we leave now? And and she stopped me and she said, what do you really want? And because she was on my team, she was in my community, she was collaborating with me, she asked me the question to support my own research and and that stopped me. And and she said, and she said, and and then she said, because when you say should should we go, it, it keeps the other person in this, does she want to go? Does she not want to go? What do I say now? So it creates this it creates so much confusion and uncertainty for the other person. It puts the and, emotional labor onto them, doesn't it? Yes. And and because I'm too scared to say what I want because I'm not I'm second guessing what somebody else wants. So there's fear of saying what I want. But actually when I said yes, I want to leave now it was so clear for her. And then she could say, I want to stay five more minutes. But actually for her, it was, yes, I want to leave too. But it, it was really, yeah, by taking responsibility for what I wanted, it it also makes it clearer for others. And this was really relevant for my children, actually, because so often I wasn't being clear about what I wanted. So it wasn't giving them the ability to be clear about what they wanted. And so the only way I can 
I can raise my children to know what they want is if I demonstrate that, if I do it myself. And and this is just one example, but if I didn't have someone there to 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 pull me up on that, to really show me what I was doing, it was so unconscious that I would keep doing that. And I wouldn't be creating creating the change, the ripples that I that I want to create for my children. Yeah, and, and this is very much the idea of modeling as well, isn't it? That we have to do the work ourselves <clears throat> and we have to be able to to recognize the areas that we need to pull ourselves up on in order to to allow our children to have the the space to see us showing up in a particular way. And otherwise, what we're doing is we are modeling certain behaviors, which then actually isn't free choice on their part because they're only seeing certain behaviors. So they're only able to choose from the behaviors that they're seeing from us. Yes. Yeah, absolutely that. And and the other parts of community is- You mentioned um, shared experience. Yeah, is is shared experience and and really just it's fun. It's just fun to do things with other people. It it brings it brings different perspectives. It brings more possibilities, and yeah, it's it, it creates. Yeah, it's like this. It's like this web of support and. For, for children and for adults and for the parents, because we, yeah, just having all, I mean, if you look at it like a web, like you have a thread almost connecting you to each person there, and then they have a thread connecting, and it's just, that's all the different connections that are happening, and it creates a net. It creates a net which which catches everybody who's who's in there, and and that's how I see community, collaboration, and and what it can create it's so um... <clears throat> i have a question for you which is in part very much prompted by your honesty here in the podcast because i want to i want to uh, reciprocate i find this a very difficult uh, topic to talk about because one of i suppose my biggest regrets one of my biggest regrets from home educating is that i never found a community partly i moved around a lot from place to place partly it's it's difficult to find. The home ed community in the UK is is really quite, I found it difficult to find a tribe. Um, there, you know, I never really fell into the unschooling category. I didn't really fall into the structured schooling category. I moved around a fair bit. Um, my children always seem to be slightly the wrong age. Like they were always, children were always a little bit younger or then they're a little bit older and 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 so on and so forth. And then I would find a community perhaps in a country abroad and we would move again. And I would lose that sense of community. So I find it, I find this topic quite difficult because for me, community and finding your tribe is like this chimera that I never got to have. And even now I'm sort of right towards the end of, of our home education journey. I don't have it. I don't, there were, there were these little moments when I felt that I had it and they are some of the happiest memories I have from home education. When, you know, the children would be in a group, I would be sat with the mothers and it just felt wonderful. And I know there will be people listening to this who say, well, this is all a, you know, I agree with all of this, but I can't find it. So what, what would you say to those people like me and other people who say, what do you do when you don't have this community and you don't have this collaboration when it's really just you and the children on your own? Yeah, and and that really, like I, I hear that that this is, yeah, a, a painful topic for you and, and it resonates for me. And, and that is a big reason why it's so important for me is because I, I'm also missing that. I I have it in in small bursts, but I want it more. And, and, and I see the value of, of what it brings for my children. Like it, it creates so much value to have other children that they can be with, not in the, in a structured group, but just really just to be with and to, you know, let that, let the unfolding happening, let, let the unfolding happen. And, and so one of the things that I would say to anyone listening is, is reach out to me because 
I I want to connect with people and, and I want to create that. Um, another thing that I would say is is really, which has been my big thing, is is what is stopping me from creating community and and really doing the work on on my own barriers and and i i realized like i have these survival strategies to isolate myself and and so many ways that i i cut connection and and they came from and still do come they they haven't gone i i'm very much aware that they still exist for me but this real core belief that I have that I I don't have value and I I don't have anything to bring and and these were these these have been really painful to discover at first and a a really really difficult realization about myself that it's yeah I I really believe that no one would really want to be with me and and so then I I had all these strategies of of disconnecting of disconnecting myself and and i'm now slowly starting to to be more vulnerable and 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 really be more honest and and put myself out there and say hey as an extension of of the the so me and marina being together in cabo verde and just just so you know marina doesn't live in england we we met online and she lives in italy so we we don't live in the same country um but as an extension of of the experiments and the discovery that we were making together, we we decided we didn't want it to stop because it's really easy to do a month and then come back to your life and then just go back to how it was. And and we were both really scared that that's what would happen. So we created these really short, you know, three times a week where we come together and we just practice together, really being in each other's team. Like I just shared, say, hey, do you notice that? So there's three different practices that we do on each day and they're just half an hour because we also realized and and one another discovery is is when you're a parent and you've got your children and you're especially when you're home educating this this work of transformation and healing and and being more self-aware you have to do it in between all the other stuff it, it, you don't have like a solid 2 hours in your day it's it's difficult i we really appreciate that so they're just half an hour sessions three times a week um, and we've changed the time slightly. So it's Mondays at seven, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And, and 7 p.m. on a Monday and then Fridays at 9 a.m. And it's just coming together for half an hour with other parents and, and bringing your mess, bringing with the team. And and for me, that that's what I'm noticing is that I, I started building the team in these online spaces with my healing and transformation and then slowly it's trickling down into I, I want to create more offline spaces where I'm with parents and have that community because the, the online spaces are really more for me and my children are not part of that and and for me the the, the community is is me and my children together with other parents and their children like that that is the community that 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 I long for and I'm and I'm working to create I'm I'm not there yet I'm I'm taking steps towards it but I I'm not fully there I think uh, it does and I, I think what you say is really true about what is it that's holding you back from creating that community or accessing that community because I um I am a classic fl- Facebook user in as much as I tend to join face- Facebook groups that I think would be really good for creating um creating friendships and then I I lurk in the background and I don't actually attend any of the events or interact or anything like that and and for I'll give you a really good example I I realized that I was very lonely and and I thought and I speak to lots of home ed parents and they all say really similar things so I thought okay I'm going to set up a Facebook group because that's my answer to everything I'm going to set up a Facebook group called home ed connections and it's going to be for the parents to come on and it's going to be a bit like Bumble or Tinder or whatever where you post like a post with your picture and answer some fun questions about yourself and um, I set it up about like three three weeks ago I set it up and 
as always with these things, very slow to get started. And we got about 200 people join quite soon. And then then I've had difficulty sharing the group around because homemade groups, very locked down, even if it's just like a nice thing like that, they don't really like it. And so I feel like it's really triggered in me this sense of I put myself out there and now nothing's happening and it's the group isn't take you need quite a lot of people in a group like that to make it work because you need a lot of people to see the profiles and so I did I thought okay I'm going to really throw myself at this and I you know I put posts in the group saying look let's share the group if everyone can share it to like one of their other Facebook groups I brought in a big team of moderators so that I would feel that it was very collaborative a community effort and then really quickly, within about a week, I just thought, this isn't working. I'm, I've tried everything. And my feelings of rejection came in very quickly. And I thought, oh, my, you know, this is me. This is my idea being rejected. I don't want to put myself out there anymore. This feels really uncomfortable. This feels really difficult now because people aren't replying to me. I'm putting, I felt very vulnerable putting posts up saying, please share this group because it feels like, I think people are suspicious. They think you're doing it for a business or something when I genuinely just wanted to make friends. I didn't even want to run the group. I was actually, my plan was if it gets big enough, I'll just hand it over to somebody so I can just be a member because I just wanted to, to make friends in the group. And I think a lot of um, a lot of my fear of not, a lot of the reasons perhaps that I haven't found that sense of community is that fear of rejection that, came through very clearly with the setting up of the Facebook group. But I, I know I have enough self-awareness to know that it links all the way back to when I was a child. You know, the, the, the classic sort of games, standing there, are you going to get picked for the team? You know, there's groups being chosen. All the other, I was at an all-girls school, so you can imagine how messy that was. Um, you know, and this idea that everyone gets chosen ahead of you, and this idea of rejection. And it really resonates what you were saying there about understanding what it is that's stopping you either creating the community or getting into the community is very much for me, this fear of rejection, this fear that you will set something up and nobody will show up, which has happened to me in the homemade community. And it's really difficult when it happens because you're not only are you, uh, do you feel quite humiliated, but you're, you're there with your children who are the generally the, the, the people that you least want to look very emotionally vulnerable with, which of course brings us right back to some of the podcasts that you and I have done about that. Because um, it's like you don't want to rub it, you don't want your shame to rub off on them. You don't want them to feel any tiny part of the failure that was or the rejection that was from that. So, I mean, what you say really resonates with me. Unfortunately, it still doesn't make me want to go and set up a community because because that fear of rejection is is still there. So the spaces that you've set up that happen three times a week, are these for uh, for people to join? Are they WhatsApp? Is it uh, is it Zoom calls? How does it work? It, oh, yeah, it's it's on a Zoom call. It's um it's open to anybody who's a parent because it's it's specifically a space for parents. It's called Messy Spaces for Parents or me Messy Spaces Create Mass for Parents. Um, there's no charge. There's no financial and you can come once twice three times a week it's up to you and really the, the only the reason we're doing it is because we want to continue our research our experimentation our collaboration and and really just how valuable it was for us to have each other and and if we have even more of us then it will create even more value that's really the the ethos behind it like the, the the bottom line is that is as the more of us that come together the more value we create and are you but, hoping to have kind of offline meetups as well yeah I'm, I'm really glad you asked me that so I I do have an idea I want to create in England um for home edge and actually it doesn't have to be just home ed actually for any parents but it would most probably be on a weekday but something called archetypal adventure days and this is really where we we're visiting and I've done it a few times with my children but I want to do it with other people is um we visited stone circles we went to Glastonbury we went to the chalice well there and the tour and really just visiting these spaces that are that have oh I can't even explain it but just like this energy about them and 
really coming together. We, we, we took picnics, we packed picnics and being out in nature, being together. And yes, just having these adventure days with, with, with something greater than us, really. It was, you know, adventure days with each other and also with Gaia, with, with these archetypal energies that are coming through in these really magical places. And, and from what I'm now discovering, there are many, many places like this in England. There, there are many stone circles and, and, and ley lines and you just so much to discover. And so I, and, and also for me, I, I really want to visit ancient woodlands, like really old ancient trees. I, we, we spent quite a bit of time with them, with the two oak trees in, in Glastonbury, Gog and Magog. I don't know if you've, if you visited them, but it was, it was just wonderful just to be there with the children and the conversations that came and it, yeah, it, it opened up different parts of, of all of us. And it was a really special experience. And actually that we did with another home ed mother and friend and her children. So yes, I, I'm, I haven't created it yet, but it's, it's brewing. So and I will let you know when when the flyer in the and it's ready <laughs> to go. Is there a website? Have you got a website for some of this stuff? No, I'm I'm still working as as you know, Eleanor. So one of my big fears of being seen, and I'm I'm working on my website where I can share all of this. So it will it's coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Maybe the next time we have a podcast, you can uh, share a website link if, that gives you a certain amount of deadline I hope it doesn't give you a certain amount of deadline anxiety <laughs> yes I, I think we, I'll call it tension which is healthy not pressure but just creating this stretch within me to to take the next step exactly well it sounds like your uh your need for community you've responded to that in such a healthy way by setting it up yourself and and sort of recognizing what it is you need and then putting it out there and seeing if other people other people need it too so it's very inspiring thank you so much sarita for coming on the podcast today uh, it's been a really interesting topic for me to talk about and it's been really interesting to hear your your perspective on it as well so thank you so much thank you Eleanor. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Home Education Matters podcast. See you at the next one. Have a lovely day.